Okay, excellent. And volume is not an issue. So, uh, good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Eden Historical Commission. We have an audience in the Great Plain Room at Town Hall and also on Zoom. I am Rose A. Doherty, uh, Chair of the Needham Historical Commission. What I'd like to do is confirm that uh, the uh, commission members are present along with persons anticipated on the agenda. On the agenda. So, uh, Laura Dorfman. Here. Okay. Uh, Don Lankowitz. Here. Jeff Heller. Here. Uh, Dylan is home with COVID. We know that, and Gloria has not yet arrived, and Rose Doherty is definitely here. Yeah. Yeah. There she is. Okay, so say you're here. Okay, excellent. Uh, we are expecting. Um, we are expecting that Adrian Harrington, uh, the owner of 1019 Central Avenue, will be on. Uh, Yes, Madam Chair, she's on as an attendee, and whenever you're ready for her, we can make her Excellent. Balance. Excellent. Adrian, if she would just say that she is here. I will move her over so she can. Is Dylan attending by Zoom? I thought he didn't he mention that or uh uh Don uh Roach, Dave Roach. Hello. Dylan. Hmm? Dylan, did Dylan say, didn't he say he was? He would try to attend by Zoom. I don't know whether he's on there. He's not yet. Okay. Um, Adrian, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? But we can't see you. Yes, indeed. Um, oh. I'm not allowed to start my video. Oh. Okay. Can we make it a little bit softer? Other people don't have hearing aids. So, well, we could turn the volume down. <laughs> well, I want to make sure you can hear that. Oh, yes. So my new machines, down I can bit. hear. Okay. So, uh, I am going to start by saying that this open meeting of the Needham Historical Commission is uh, being conducted consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, because of COVID virus. And the order allows public bodies to meet remotely and now in a hybrid fashion. And in March of 2020, we would not have seen this one coming. Uh, but as long as reasonable public access is afforded, everything is just fine. Uh, and the uh, first item on the agenda will feature public comment. So for this meeting, uh, the, we are convening in person and by Zoom app. All attendees, please note that this meeting is being recorded uh, and the recording is a public document and anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. And uh, Zoom attendees, please be aware that uh, folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Uh, materials have been sent uh, to the website. Uh, the agenda has been sent there. So I'm going to go through a few meeting uh, ground rules uh, before we turn to the agenda, uh, just so that we have an effective and clear uh, meeting uh, and accurate meet minutes. So I'm going to introduce each item on the agenda. And for any response that you have, please wait until I yield the uh, floor to you. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps the minutes. Before speaking, all members of the public are asked to give their names and addresses for the minutes. Um, and the first item is going to deal with the demolition request of a house on the inventory. And after the owner's remarks are concluded, I will open the floor first to members of the public here in the room and then to the people on Zoom. Uh, so you can raise your hand uh, on the Zoom screen and uh, Miles will give you access. I do have to tell you that there will be a slight delay between when you have access and when you're actually live. It seems as if it's very long, but it's really just a few seconds. 
So I'm going to begin with a very brief history of the Historical Commission and the process that we follow according to Needham Bylaw 2.11.5. The Historical Commission was established in 1976, and the general laws of the Commonwealth charge us with listing Needham's historic assets in an official inventory. That inventory, now on the town's website, has almost 200 structures and sites, and the criteria for listing a property are straightforward. Properties have one or more of the following characteristics architectural significance, association with a person who was important in Needham's history, the site of an important event in Needham or contribution to Needham's quality of life. So following the Needham bylaw, the commission is charged with the following a specific process when, own, when the owner of a property on the inventory applies for a de demolition permit. First, the Needham Historical Society Commission, sorry, Sorry, <laughs> commission holds a meeting to determine whether the building is historically significant. At our April 28th to 2022 meeting, the commission voted unanimously that the 1838 Galen Orr House at 1019 Central Avenue is historically significant. Now we move to the second part of the process. We will decide tonight after hearing from the owner, owner and interested members of the public, whether the building should be preferably preserved. That status would be, would place a six month demolition delay on, delay on the property. Uh, the purpose is to find an alternative rather than demolition. If after six months, no way of preserving the building is found, the town clerk and the building department are notified that demolition may proceed. So what we're going to do now is turn to the first item on the agenda, the 1838 Galen Orr House at 1019 Central Avenue, uh, a house on the inventory for which a uh, demolition permit has been sought. And I will ask Adrian Harrington, who is the owner of said property, uh, to talk a little bit about um, uh, her plans. So go ahead, Miles, if you can make her. Adrian, you should now be able to have uh, the option to turn your video on, which we kindly request that you do. And Madam Chair, uh, Dylan has joined as a panelist as well. Excellent. And we have Dave Roach as an attendee. Should you like to make him a, a yes, panelist? Yes, please. And Dave also. Please. Um, uh, go right ahead. Uh, I thank you. The same room. I appreciate the introduction. Um, nice to see you all again. Um, oh, good. It looks like Dave has joined. Um, Dave, they've just handed the floor over to me. I wanted to make sure your audio and visual was working. I think. How's that? Excellent. Thank you for joining. Um, I guess that the floor has been given to me. Uh, so um, I guess I, I'll take the opportunity to tell a bit of my story. I believe that's what this time is meant for. Um, I guess I wanted to start with um, thanking, for, thanking everybody here for their time. Uh, I know this takes a lot of time out of everyone's day. Um, and as I had spoken at the, the last meeting, um, the, the purpose of this is to uh, explore a, a permit to um, demo the home. So, I guess I'll start with a little bit about my background and why I'm here and who I am and um, I guess the purpose um, for being here. And that is, uh, I, uh, I'll start with, I come from a military family. And um, when I was a kid, I grew up on a hundred year old farmhouse in Ohio. It was a Studebaker farm. And it was the source of my love of old homes. Uh, and so I worked with my dad um, on nights and weekends while he was not working at the military base to help him restore that house uh, and all the outhouses um, and surrounding buildings on that property. Um, so while we were stationed there, uh, that's where I fell in love with woodworking and development. I then, um, uh, we moved back to the East Coast and continued to fall in love with working with my hands uh, and building things. I then got a degree in product development. So learning to do metal work uh, woodwork, uh, engineering, manufacturing. Um, and I've been working in product development for most of my career. 
So building things, fixing things, restoring things is really in my blood and something I take a lot of pride in. Um, I know it's not often you see a woman who can do a lot of those things. Actually, my first co-op was as a machinist. Uh, so I actually really enjoy uh, the understanding of how things work and also fixing them. Um, we have a house up in Vermont. It's a it's extended family where we get together and do our reunions every year. It's a family built home. And I actually go up on my weekends and help to restore that property as well. Um, so there's a lot of pride and there's a lot of uh, technical ability in my family. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, I come from a long line of uh, Americans that have fought for this country. And I think that I like to carry those traits, um, but also try to remember and retain where we come from. Um, and so retaining our history and representing it is one of the main reasons that I bought this house. Uh, I have a great aunt uh, who was born and raised in Needham. Uh, and so when I bought my house in Needham, when I bought this beautiful Galen Orr home in Needham, um, I actually felt like I was coming back to some family roots. Um, as many of you know, John Harrington has a house on the Lexington Green. He's also part of the family. Um, and that is also the, um, one of the ties back to my DAR lineage. Um, so enough about me. I hope all of that context and history helps to communicate that uh, when I bought this home, I was uh, hoping to restore it. And that's what I told the owner when I purchased it. Um, she was very concerned that someone would knock it down. And I told her I'd do my best not to. Uh, and I come to this, uh, this group in an appeal uh, that I have tried my hardest. Um, so with that in mind, I wanted to share uh, some images uh, of the home. Am I allowed to share my screen? You should be allowed to, yes. Um, let me, uh... no, um, I'll, I'll sign you as a co-host and, and let you do that. Okay. Um, I guess while we figure that out, I'll add in here. Um, so we've identified a few challenges with the structure um, and uh, Dave Roche, who's written a letter, has inspected it. And Dave, I'll let you speak to your findings. Um, and then I also have worked with a number of professionals who have been giving me advice along the way. Um, as with any renovation, uh, once you start opening walls, we start to learn more about what we're working with. And so uh, there's three main points I think that are important to take away here. Um, the first one is, is that when the home was initially designed, there are a few varying additions to the house um, but when it was designed, it was uh, under supported. Um, and that's shown in a few places in the house. Um, the second point to take away is around the damage of the age. Um, there is some insect damage in one of the critical beams down in the basement that has been sistered, but not well. Uh, and because of that damage and poor sistering, it's not sitting properly on the foundation. And then, the third point is that there is age and decay around uh, the beams that are still intact without insect damage, but are cracking from stress. Um, again, it's age and then just the design of the home. Um, there's a lot more details that were included in one of the engineers who, who evaluated the house, also noting that there's no foundation under the back of the home. So his recommendation was not to continue making edits or updates to the house. Uh, purely because you have wood sitting on dirt. Uh, and that's gonna be a, a, a very big problem. And um, his recommendation was not to continue there. Um, I will add that I've put a lot of love and care and my own personal blood, sweat and tears into this house, um, including my own money. Uh, I've put in all new windows, actually restoring and designing custom windows uh, to mimic the original windows to the house to try to retain the historic value and facade on the front. Um, I've put in a new heating system uh, to make it more efficient and bring it up to bring it up to date. Um, new hot water um, and a variety of other finishing updates. Um, the the key finding that brings us here today is in the kitchen space, um, where uh, in in an effort to open up a wall, which was supposed to be an elementary activity. Uh, revealed that the, the joists in this kitchen ceiling did not extend all the way to the other room. Uh, and so this presents a design flaw and also and doesn't quite work according to what I understand is um, what would be needed to make it structurally sound. 
So in order to support the ceiling in the kitchen, you'd need a taller beam and that would not allow for head height, uh, which then starts this domino effect of other design uh, components that limits uh, my ability to make the changes to the house. Um, so if I, if I have the ability to share my screen, I'll flip through some photos for the group. You should. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Dave because I'm sure I'm not using the right technical terms um, or anything else he wants to add. Um, I guess I want to show this here. Can you see my photos? Yes. Um, so you'll see in the kitchen here, we have um, a beam that's damaged and also a header that's not sitting properly. Um, you'll see in the kitchen, the, the beams don't extend all the way to the other room. Um, so this was actually, um, when the wall was opened, we found that it was poorly framed initially. Once the wall came down, we realized that uh, it wasn't going to work. Is that the wall that the fireplace was in? Yes, there was a fireplace here. Um, but the way that it was built around the fireplace was also substandard. When we opened it up, it was not properly supported. Are those the original posts behind the, the mic ends? I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't understand the question. <clears throat> In the image, there's there's new there's new timber hold looks like holding up the ceiling. Correct. And, yeah. behind, and, and behind it, some very thin posts. And were those were those part of the original structure? No, or they no. that one's new. The, no. the post, not the beam. The posts, the, the back row of posts. In the in the, the picture, it's the leftmost. Yeah. This one here. Yeah, and there's another one along the way. Is that new or is that original as well? I am not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I'll be candid. Yeah. Looks like an old stud. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Not, not, a, big, not, a, <laughs> not a post. Thank you. What I what I did here, and again, I don't speak all the technical terms, is that a lot of a lot of the things that were seen were undersized. Ten thirty. Ten nineteen. So showing this picture here, you can see that the span of the beam is too far apart. And then here you can see the sink um, where in the basement, there's a uh, the beam I mentioned that was cracking. This is directly above that. So you're looking at, I think this is maybe an eight foot span we have about an inch and a half drop. And if you extend that to just the middle of the room, it's about a four inch drop in floor. Um, and that's from the beam below and cracking. I'm having a technical issue and I can't progress to the next page. Um, Maybe I'll share my screen. Um, so these are the photos that I have. I'm sorry, guys. I'm having a technical issue with my PowerPoint. Um, I only had these these five slides here, so hopefully this helps to illustrate the point. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Adrian. Do you have anything more to add, or should we go to Dave now? Um, just looking through my notes here. I think I've covered all the important parts. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dave, I know that you have looked at the house. What is your uh, opinion? Uh, yeah, so I, I was called um, by a framing contractor that that uh, Adrian, Adrian had hired to take a look at um, some of the beams, well, I went back up a little bit. We issued a permit to um, open up, take down a couple of walls and add some beams. Contractor got in there and I'm not quite sure he 
was uh, that great at working on old homes. Um, but nevertheless, when he did open up the ceilings and the walls, found out, like Adrian said, some of the floor joists were, were short. Uh, a lot of floor joists were overspanned. Um, a bunch of the supports that, that were in the basement that obviously support the first floor um, had bug damage, had been cut over the years, had been modified. Um, you, you go in the basement and it's, you know, typical old houses, floor joists are running in about 15 different directions, uh, posts all over the place, some trees, some not. Um, it's kind of a half basement, half crawl space. You know, could it could it be fixed or modified potentially? But as we started to go upstairs, the ceiling heights that are in the house now are fairly low. So in order to actually fix it, because I think you saw in one of the previous pictures that they're probably real two by fours in the ceiling that are the floor joists for the second floor. They're they're close to 16 feet long. They're about 32 inches on center. They're way under undersized, way overspanned. There's there's big deflection areas in the ceiling. In order to keep a ceiling height, they're basically what you saw between those floor joists is the sheetrock screwed almost to the bottom of the floor on the second on the second floor. And over the years, they've fished wires through that, so there's wires that are not really in spaces that should be in spaces. Um, and again, looking at it, if you had the ceiling height that you could potentially take out the whole second floor and reframe it, it would probably have to be done with two by eights or two by tens, which is now a, a seven and a half to nine and a half inch high floor joist. And the ceiling height would be probably a little over six feet finished in the first floor, which is way below what code it requires and way below what you know even a, a historic renovation would would uh, allow um you know i'm sure once they get into the exterior walls they're going to find that there's header issues with the windows and doors and you know i'm sitting here talking to you from a house that i live in that i renovated that was built in 1830 by a by a, a, a indian war captain and I went through it and I renovated it, but my house basically had pretty good bones. I mean, I did reframe everything, but I, I had the I had the height, I had the uh, the ability to uh, bring it back to code without compromising all all these uh, code issues. I went on the outside, and and again, as Adrian said, a lot of the house is sitting right on the on the ground which I think once you started pulling siding off, she's gonna probably uncover um, sill and termite damage around the perimeter. Um, the roof rafters are all showing deflection uh, because again, they're probably undersized. I mean, when they built houses back then, you know, and at that age, I mean, this could have started as you know, a barn and then get converted to a house or whatever, but it's been added on to a, a bunch of times. And, you know, anything could be fixed. But the problem is, is that the, the amount of money, time, effort, and historic um, recreation of what happened after this would be little or none. Um, this, would, this would almost have to be a brand new home, um, the way it would have to be reframed, fixed new foundations, excavation around it. I mean, just an incredible amount of money it would, it would take to potentially save this home. So, you know, I'm all for saving old homes, um, but unfortunately on this one, I, I would have to say that it's, it's just not feasible to do it. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Roach. Um, anyone have questions uh, for him? No. 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 How, okay. much of, how much of this damage was visible? Did you have the house inspected when you bought it? That's what I was gonna ask. Adrian, was this, was this visible yeah. at the time? Um, no, when I, I actually brought in a structural engineer after the inspection, um, because of the damage that the inspector was able to see, 
And uh, unfortunately, I didn't pay the structural engineer for his services because I think I would bring him to, to come look at this again. Um, I think there were probably some beams that were exposed that he should have advised me otherwise. Um, and then I think the biggest challenges are the, the items that were not exposed. So things that we found once trying to take down a wall. Did he note any termite? I mean, typically they look for, you know, all kinds of termite or ant or bug. Did they, was there any infestation at the time of your home inspection? There was no infestation at the time of the home inspection. And the engineers looked at it and said that it was sistered. When the second engineer came in, he looked at it and said that it was sistered inappropriately, that it was not appropriately uh, uh, supported. Okay, uh, well, I can go ahead, Jeff. <clears throat> um, I mean, that was, I mean, that's what I was struck by, you know, uh, and the questions I had, um, you know, at, at the last meeting, because generally when you, you purchase a house and especially with, you know, with your commitment at the time of purchase of, of wanting to uh, preserve it, I, I would have thought that that, uh, a, a, good, a good inspector, you know, would have looked with uh, that with an eye to that sort of is there this house able to be restored, renovated? Uh, you know, we, we know the complications of any old house. Um, I you know my house has uh, you know some massive beams that have you know that that are like they look like cheesecloth. There's so many holes in them. You know, but the person pokes in there and says, well, you know, this is. You know, it's a 150 year old house. There's 150 year old bug activity, but nothing active. You know, there's no piles of things, and it, it, it's uh, the surface is it, it is holy, but the 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 core is strong. Um, so uh, you know, you would I I would have think you would look towards that. And how could how could have those things been uh, over overlooked? Uh, I mean, I, I guess you could. You can say, you know, the, I've been in that basement, and, and you know, as someone would should say could, could have looked. I haven't crawled in the crawl space, but someone could have said, "Hmm, the questionable, you know, foundation, um, you know, um, and that front room is obvious with the ceilings are low, and uh, I, I, there could have been pointed out the complications right mm -hmm. from the start." And but it, like as they said, anything for a price, anything's uh, fixable. For a price, um, but yeah, I, I I don't know how you go into something like that with with eyes closed, and and someone can't give you some insight into that in the, in the beginning, and, and yep. especially especially when you think about that you started sinking money into it into into infrastructure and and and, and windows before before you even with thinking that you had good bones um, on the house, I. I had crawled around there. I knew there were, you know, certainly questionable um, things, and I knew if it was going to be renovated, that it, it was a, you know, a gut job because it would have to be, it would definitely have to be shored up. And uh, but, oh, and then I'm, I also believe of um, restore preserving old houses doesn't mean I don't believe means maintaining them to be old. Um, I think that that old houses to be um, restored should be modernized with modern technology, um, and that just doesn't mean um, infrastructure. But I mean, there's great building materials uh, to build on, and 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 if you, I'm I'm of I'm of the mind that if you have to take three quarters of the house down, um, and and build new, and maintain one quarter. As uh, as historic, uh, just if it's just a facade, in my mind, that's historic preservation. Um, so I, you know, I, I I wonder if you you know I, I'd like to hear if you th th thought about considering that and doing you know three quarters new and maintaining some uh, older aspect of it. So we, in our mind, can say that it's it's part of it's been preserved. There's a there's a piece of Galen ore there. If it's just a damn porch, you know, uh, at least there's something of Galen ore 
And, 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 then, and then you can look at a modern house behind it and say, wow, that's a, that's a beautiful restoration. You know, makes a very livable space, a modern space, makes it a sellable space, yet it still maintains a flavor of the, the, the historic lot. You know, there's a whole lot more to, I think, preservation than just uh, saving a house, but also saving uh, the, the topography. So you have a, you have a, either something new there, but you have a vision of what was once old was there. So I, I'd like to hear more about that, you know, because uh, that'll, that'll sway my vote um, in regards to that. No, I think you bring up really great points. Um, and I think that there's a combination of answers I have for you. Um, the first one is, is that the inspector did a phenomenal job pointing out a lot of the errors in the home. Um, a lot of the decay and a lot of the problem, especially the, the termite damage. Um, the structural engineer that I brought in was unfortunately a friend of my realtor and countered all of the points that the inspector had to make me feel at ease to close the deal. Um, there's probably a conversation in here for a lawyer on, on the advice that he gave, but unfortunately I didn't pay for his advice. It was... He talked me into buying it. Um, so I feel a little bit taken, um, but I guess that's also my fault. And I can't blame it all on that, that particular situation either because uh, I was also blindly in love with the house because of its history. Um, so I will say that um, I have an uncle who's an expert witness for a lot of these um, you know, large insurance construction cases and things. Um, so he and I did hold a brainstorm um, around what we could save to your idea around saving a part of the home. Um, we talked about what it would take to, to save the facade or to save the porch or to save the back of the house. Um, I will highlight that we didn't come out with any ideas from that brainstorm uh, in the hopes of saving the aesthetic of it. And I say that for a couple of reasons. The first one is, is the back of the house isn't sitting in on foundation. So that kind of rules out the back. The center of the home is, is sunk because of the problems with the beams. Um, and the front of the house has actually detached. So this is part of that blind love. So on the inspection report, it was made obvious that the porch had detached uh, from the front of the house uh, and it is sinking. Uh, and in my head, being a naive homeowner that, you know, it's okay, I'll, I'll fix it, I'll jack it up, we'll reattach it. Uh, but once getting contractors involved, we also learned that that probably wasn't the best idea either. Uh, so I'm out of ideas in that regard. Um, but I, I, uh, I did put some effort into explore it. Did you, did you have, do you have plan, plan, design plans for what you want to replace it with? I mean, you know, if the front porch is obviously nobody would, you know, if they were building a whole house behind the back of the house is obvious, the, the weakest part of the house, uh, it, it, whether it was on a stone foundation or not, it was, uh, it was, it was too small. Um, my wife, we couldn't, we couldn't, my wife and I couldn't negotiate in, inside the house because the wheelchair wouldn't go through the door to the kitchen. Um, and, you know, we had to go around the back to the, 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 the little patio. Um, the grass area where the fire pit was to come in that way. And, and, and uh, so, um, and, and you could just tell everything was low, sag you know, sagging, you know, not, not square or plumb. Um, I, I knew that, that part of the house was, was even the upstairs is uh, non-compliant and tiny and uh, hard to use. I just, I think the, 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 the nicest feature of the house is the front porch. And if that were even to be recreated new, but to look old, you know, look to look like it did, you know, um, I mean, that's a, a, you know, and that saves a lot too. Uh, that's my feeling. Um, you know, if everything were gone and but it was and that porch was reconstructed with new materials to look the same and the foundation was in the same place and all of that and everything behind it was all new and then enlarged. It's the, that. That retains its historic flavor for me. I would love to see what your plans are for a recreation. Um, if that, if, but you haven't got that far yet. 
Um, so can I step in here for a minute? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to respond to that one. Yeah, so, so Jeff, you know, her intention when she bought this house was uh, was not in the back of her mind that this was going to be a total gut job renovation. She bought the home. It looked fairly decent on the inside. They were going to take a couple walls down, put a new kitchen in, update a few things. But, you know, to go into a project knowing that you have to gut the whole thing, reframe it, put a new roof on it, new siding, new, you know, whatever you have to do. And in this case, would have to raise it, raise the second floor. Um, you know, no one in their right mind would would pay the money that you pay for the property and then put that kind of money into the house. You, you're upside down, way upside down. So, you know, I think again, you know, she went into it. The house looked decent. You know, it. You know, you can I use this. You know, um, saying a lot. You can put lipstick on a pig, but underneath it's still a pig, unfortunately. And you know, you vinyl side a house. Once you pull the vinyl siding off, you don't know what's underneath because it's covered it up and it looks great. Um, I think a lot of things have been done to this house over the years. Um, and I just don't think anybody could really see it without gutting it. So to say that if she had plans for a, a major renovation of this house, I won't speak for her, but it's certainly after talking with her that that was not the case. Um, and this has kind of escalated into something that is uh, is w way more than the scope of work that they had planned on doing to this home. Okay, and also the um, any design that you have uh, is really outside what we would be discussing. We're talking about uh, what we will do with the, um, the property as of this evening. Uh, and I want you to know uh, that uh, each member of the commission has received the report from the structural engineer and knows all of the, the issues. Uh, and I would be happy to read that into the minutes. Yes, go ahead, Laura. Just had a question, Adrian. It looks like you've done a few refinances over the, since you purchased in 2019. I'm wondering if any of the appraisals, why it, nothing came up with any of the appraisals on the property. Um, because typically that would be something they would bring to the lender's attention if they saw something new that was structural in nature. That was never a problem with the refinances. It's public records, so I'm not speaking of. Yeah, of course. Um, so the only appraisal um, images that they got were the ones that I took, which they asked for the two photos of each room and an image of the ceilings. Oh, they didn't go to the property? There was these no. Blenders. No, I, I took the photos that they asked for and submitted them. Hmm. Okay. okay, and that's not the way you would do business, I can tell. Well, typically they go visit the property, so yes. that's unusual. That's okay, okay, understood. Are there any other questions, comments uh, for our property owner? Uh, or for Mr. Roach. Yes. I don't think so. Thank you. Do you want to come in now or do you want to, hmm? to, you want to speak to the public? Oh, I want the, uh, any members of the public who are interested in speaking. Uh, Madam Chair. This is your chance. May, may I advise that you um, read the reports into the record that the board has seen just so the members of the public may Abs have an understanding of those reports. Absolutely, I even have my glasses up <laughs> for just that reason. Okay, this is from a structural engineer, Corey Matthews, PE. Uh, and he says, the intent of this report is to document the observations made on February 9th, 2022, during our visit to the referenced address. Uh, this report is based on observations as well as information, information provided during the walkthrough. It is not an itemization of all deficiencies that may exist and is only meant to provide you with a general idea of structurally significant problems observed during the visit. The visit was conducted as a walkthrough inspection without destructive tests or removal of existing finishes. 
and is limited to the por portions of the structure that were exposed to view. We were requested to make observations of the recent interior framing modifications made by a contractor you hired to begin significant interior renovation. The areas we were able to review were generally the basement, the first and second floor of the original structure, as these were the areas undergoing recent work. For the purpose of general orientation, uh, we are referring to the building when it's viewed from Central Avenue. The observations and recommendations. In the interior, in the basement, the basement is access, accessed by a steep wood stair adjacent to the living room and kitchen. Recent, recent structural restoration repairs, existing of parging, uh, the rubble stone foundation walls, Buttressing of walls with concrete and pouring a concrete floor were observed. Undersized timber floor joists were observed, framing into a timber girder that showed signs of varying levels of rot or termite damage throughout its length. Many of the floor joists were found to have deteriorated notched bearing seats and strip of ripped two times you have to correct me, uh, Dave, when I make a mistake, was nailed to the girder to improve the joist connection. However, the size and spacing of nails used to secure the nailer to the girder provide minimal improvement to the otherwise structurally deficient connections. Access to the crawl spaces beyond the full basement was extremely limited, preventing a close-up inspection of these areas. Signs of rot as well as insect damage were observed in portions of the first floor framing above the crawl space immediately adjacent to the basement. First and second floor framing. Upon entering the building from the right side entry hall that faces the door that faces the driveway, we recently we observed a recently installed LVL beam and soffit framing that supports attic and roof framing. The two ply LVL beam appeared to be supported on one end by only a double two by four post within a new partition wall and partially bearing on an original large timber post on the other end. The existing post had been previously removed, shortened, and then reinstalled below the LVL beam. It was apparently cut much too short because pieces of framing were stacked under the base of the post to fill the gap. Although no calculations were performed, given the span and the tributary loads to be carried, the beam appears undersized and the substandard support conditions must be corrected. It appears that another load bearing wall had recently been removed adjacent to the kitchen. The contractor had installed two by four studs between the floor and the underside of the second floor joist that had been supported by the wall before it was removed. The two by four stud shoring was not vertically plumb or braced against lateral displacement and appeared to be heavily stressed by the weight second floor framing being carried by only a few two by fours. Another two ply LVL beam was observed, installed flush framed up to the ceiling cavity and spanned across the width of the kitchen just beyond the ends of the propped ceiling joists by about 18 to 24 inches. It was unclear to us what the plan was to permanently resupport the second floor framing. Conclusions. It was quite obvious that the recent structural modifications were not performed by experienced framers and the attempts to temporarily shore up the remaining structure were grossly inadequate. It is our opinion that the work has significantly weakened the building and would need to be completely removed, reconfigured, properly engineered and reinstalled in order to make the building a safe living working space for continued occupancy. I recommend to you while on site to immediately hire another contractor to correct the previous attempts to shore up the building and to generally make safe. Given the low existing ceiling height throughout the first floor and the nearly complete framing needed to correct the substandard work, as well as make the second floor living space code compliant, there would be very little of the existing structure suitable to remain. 
Additionally, from our experience with similarly constructed homes built around this period, it is very likely that far more rot and insect damage will be found throughout the walls, floors, and roof framing once exposed. Therefore, it is our recommendation that the entire building be demolished and reconstructed in accordance with current building codes and standards. This report is based on, upon observations of the visible and apparent conditions of the building and its major components on the date of this inspection. Although care was taken to perform a proper and thorough inspection, we make no representation regarding the existence of latent or concealed defects. No warranty or guarantee is expressed or implied with any structure. This report is made only in the best exercise of our ability and judgment. Structural work recommended herein requires design and supervision from a structural engineer. Our office specializes in structural construction and can be contracted for further investigations and preparations of structural plans referred to above. If you would disagree with any issues pertaining to this report, please uh, contact our office. Uh, should you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, Corey G. Matthews, professional engineer. Okay. I'm sure there's uh, one hand listed on Zoom. For those dialing in on the telephone, you can hit star nine to raise your hand that way. We have Priscilla Chan. Okay, please, uh, Ms. Chan, speak to us. Hello, Ms. Khan? Hi there. How are you doing, Rose? Anyway, just fine for okay. Um, I only have a very basic knowledge of architectural um, underpinnings and such, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like this is an un unlivable house at the present, and it would be so costly to bring it up to code that it's it's not worth preserving. Uh, so it's just my opinion. I just want to put in my two cents. And Priscilla, would you give us your uh, address, please? 19. Uh, go ahead. 19 Oak Knoll Terrace. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to uh, make observations, questions? Yes. Uh, Mr. Right. Okay, 11 Ardmore Road. Thank you. Nardone? Nardone. Nardone, not Ardmore. Nardone. Yeah. And I guess my question concerns the, the historic significance of the superstructure, which I, I gather was discussed at the previous meeting. So I don't have the information that is already been on the table, but it does seem to be relevant to balancing the uh, decision consideration of whether the uh, the costs and the uh, the repairs that will be necessary to make the building structurally sound would be outweighed by the historic significance of the building and is. I, if, if that has been discussed, I presume that that will be in everybody's mind to, to weigh against the, the costs and the, uh, mm -hmm. the efforts of, of preservation. Uh, we did discuss how very important mm -hmm. Galen Orr is to me. And is... the architectural significance as well. And I'll mention that uh, Mr. LeMay lives in uh, the house that Galen Orr Moved to. So I guess he got out of this one. He lived in this house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really lived in it for, I think, six years. When he first came to New York, he built the house and lived in it for about six years. There's another Galen Orr house on Nordon Road, isn't it? Is there not? It was from one house. One behind, one right up next to the cemetery. But there were three houses that he lived in, Gloria? Yeah, yeah, he did. And then he, he also, um, 
developed a couple of properties. Mm -hmm. So we at one point had to sort out the Gaylenor residential housing versus the Gaylenor stack houses. Uh, so these members. are the only two though that remain. Uh, I so. Yeah. so the the house that I I live in seems to be structurally sound. I did uh, talk to the engineer, and uh, the, the the beams are 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 uh, did not seem to be rotted and, or, or insect damage. Although there, of course, was some inevitable age uh, damage to uh, parts of the house. Uh, its architectural significance, I would say, is not great. Uh, a lot, as with many old houses, uh, a lot of the original material has been uh, removed and updated over the years. And I presume the same thing has, has happened to this house. I'm not sure what kinds of uh, historic events or uh, experiences took place in the house that uh, I occupied, uh, saw, but um, as we all seem to agree, Keelan Orr was a substantial, significant historic figure in, in the town's history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay, are there other comments from uh, our the public out there? We have Jim on Zoom. Okay. Jim, please, you are going to be have access to us. Can you need us, please? Hello, Jim. Hi, this is actually Megan McKennedy. Um, we're logged in under my husband's um, uh, name, but we live at 1028 Central Ave, which is across the street from Adrian. And just want to say um, we have, can attest to all of the efforts that she's put in to renovate this house. Um, we met her when she first moved in. We've been residents here since 2018. Um, and the excitement that she came into the house all her plans, we've walked through it with her. Um, we renovated our own house, um, but she really had a passion for this and the effort is very, um, it was very much like a, a solid effort on her part. Okay. Um, just, Go ahead. Oh no, I just wanted to say like from living across the street from her, um, she really okay. did put, a, so much time, energy, effort, and love into that house. So um, just to kind of attest to that. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that observation. Uh, is there anyone mm -hmm. else on the uh, call who wishes to speak to us? There are no more hands raised. No more hands raised, okay. In that case, it is time for us to move to uh, for the uh, commission to move to uh, discussing uh, the situation. And I will ask uh, Laura, do you have any observations you would like to make? I don't, I think our decision is to decide, is to decide whether to okay. be prefer preferably okay. preserved. Right, exactly. And then we just need to stay within that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Regardless of nothing, nothing else. Yeah, and done. and what that means is, is it worthy of a delay? And the delay is to seek out alternatives to demolition. I think a lot of that work has already been done. You know, what are all the alternatives? You can try to sell it to somebody else. You can do the massive repairs that need to be done. Or as Jeff, you were saying, there's sort of the repair and the add-on perspective that could be an alternative. Okay, and Jeff, do you have any observations? I'll try to be short, I have a lot. Um, <clears throat> I feel, you know, I mean, I guess I, I, th I feel like it's preferably preferred in, you know, uh, the global picture of things. You know, and as I said, you know, the, looking at the, the, the lot and the, you know, it, it's probably it was a poorly built when it was first built. 
And then there was probably poor additions that were built just to make it more livable as in, you know, in those times, but they didn't really pay attention to code or, or you know, as common sense kind of structure. So um, it, it, we wouldn't, I don't think we want to pre preferably preserve it as it is, uh, as, a, as a house that's about ready to be almost condemned. Um, and and to ask somebody to go to the hardship and the costs to go against all recommendations. Um, so I don't know if I would vote to um, to preserve it as such. I know I I, I know that um, Adrian went into this. I, there's no reason to distrust her motivations when she first bought it. Everything she says, I I I know is accurate. Um, and then she was faced with uh, this dilemma. I'm sorry she got bad, bad advice. Um, I, I would hope that in the next future designs that when she approaches an architect, that maybe she would ask the architect to take in and rebuild some of the features that might highlight some uh, of its original appearance as a historic approach. And I guess I would, Hopefully, I, I trust with that hope that maybe some adherence to that um, would be made in uh, in new construction, and so there is some way of maintaining some uh, historic appearance. And I, I guess I could you know vote with that uh, hope and, and and that good faith and not wanting to um, ask someone to preserve something that's. That, that that's falling down. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how that weighs on other people uh, in the committee. Uh, but does that, that does in a sense warrant um, a delay to have some opportunity to come back with some type of uh, design, an alternative design that could sort of preserve some part of it, you know, whether it's one quarter, 10%, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, is it Dave? I mean, is it is it unusual for someone to ask for a demolition permit without presenting to you the the, the plans for um, uh, for a rebuild? Um, do you not have architectural plans before you, or any of that? I never. We've never. I've never seen this before, where there was. Um, a demolition in front of us where there wasn't a, there wasn't a, some sort of plan to what was going to be built in, in, in its place. Um, there's, there's nothing in this case because again her her intention was never to demolish it. Um, I'm not sure and I can't speak for Adrian, but I'm not sure if she's going to be the one that ends up doing this. I mean, she's into this house for a, a ton of money already. And to tear it down and build another new home, um, you know, you know what they're going to, Jeff, you built a brand new home. You know what their stuff costs. You know, this is going to be a $2 million renovation when it's all said and done. And I'm not sure that this is uh, affordable. And I think it's also probably, although I, I, I agree with your, your theory that if somebody could build something that kind of replicated what was there it would be cool but that's not typically what they're building in this town to, to justify what they're gonna pay for that piece of property and put it on it. Um, I mean, it's, you know, I, I've talked about this in the past and the, the, the problem with this whole process is that there's no incentive, no rebates, no tax relief, nothing for the owner to get to renovate an old property. Um, in some, some cases, some towns, you actually get charged more for an antique home. So, and the renovation of this house would be, would be double what it would cost brand new. And so, you know, again, Adrian would probably chime in on, you know, what she's gonna do in the future. But, you know, if this gets sold and uh, a builder buys it, you're going to see the typical home that gets built in, in Needham on that, on that piece of property, I, I would think. 
Mm -hmm. I want to ask David a question. Yes. Um, is it is the request for a demolition permit separate from the request for a building permit? Are they two separate things? Um, the two separate things. Typically, we see the demolition permit come in, and if they know that, you know, there isn't an issue like historic or whatever, they follow up the building permit shortly, very shortly after the demolition permit is issued. So. Once it's down, there's a hole in the ground, they can start digging for a new foundation and there's no, there's no slack time in between the, the old and the new. It just continues along. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ricky, go ahead. Let's see, uh, whether or not, you know, the owner could have seen some of this damage coming in advance is, is sort of beside the point. Um, she, Often we see an extremely compromised house in which someone has lived for a very long time and has not maintained it. None of this damage is Adrian's doing or Adrian's fault. And I think um, she has shown considerable goodwill, you know, as, as Jeff said, um, and as Dave said, by investing a lot of money in the house prior to coming to this decision. I think the... Um, do, do, we know, do we know that figure? It probably is reflected in the uh, mortgages, in the financing, but no, we don't. But but the windows, windows are expensive. That's the main are expensive. Um, heating systems, things she's put into it. Um, I you know I think as Dave said, there's going to be very little left of this house if if we're renovated straight up, and honestly the. Um, Structural engineers report is scary in, in, you know, in, in how damaged some of the structural members of the house are. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really seeing a way forward, a reasonable way forward that preserves this house. All right, then are we ready to take a vote? That was a I, motion? Uh, there is a motion. I cannot do it. <laughs> you can you can read it. Yes. I move that the Native Historical Commission finds that the Galen Moore House at 1019 Central Avenue be preferably preserved and a six-month demolition delay be imposed. Second. Could we have a second, please? I'll second. Down a second. Okay, and uh, the way that we are going to do this is we are going to call on uh, each person uh, to vote. Don. No. Okay. Laura? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me while I keep track now. Okay, could, could you read that one more time? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure we're answering yes. the right question. Proof that the Needham Historical Commission finds that the Galen Orr House at 1019 Central Avenue be preferably preserved and a six month demolition delay be imposed. So, no means not preferably preserved. Yes means yes, preferably preserved. Okay. So, is that, is that again? Yes. Correct. Yes. One no. No. Okay. Yes. And one yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Jeff? No. Okay. And Gloria? No. Okay, and I am also going to vote. Oh, Dylan! I'm here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. COVID, um, COVID positive, but still here. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, and I, how do you vote? Uh, I vote no. Okay, and I also vote no. So the uh, tally is five, five no two. and one yes. Okay. Uh, so you will receive, uh, Teddy will receive a note, uh, and you will receive a note, Dave, uh, saying that uh, you can go ahead. And um, if the house is not preferably preserved, so you may do as you wish. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope if you have plans to do some of this new construction that you get some good advice, uh, get a good architect. Um, yeah. 
It's a shame that we got such bad advice through this process. Thank you both very much for your attention to the detail and for sharing all of this and for the members of the public who have come uh, to talk with us about this. Uh, it is a sad day, but it is a good vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, Adrian, I know that you're in New York working hard, but and you are certainly willing, uh, you are invited to stay for the rest of the meeting if you would like, and you too. Or if, the, if you're interested in following this process, we have a vacancy on the, on the committee and two vacancies. Two vacancies. Uh, yes, yes. And you'd be, as a, as you're eligible if you live in Needham. <laughs> Same qualified. Thank you. Thank you. Are, maybe yes. more qualified than many. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you extending the offer. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, and I will also let you enjoy the rest of your meeting. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye, neighbor. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, and um, all right. Now, the next uh, business that we have to do is approve a uh, large number of minutes, starting with March 21st. Uh, and then April 7th uh, and April 28th. Uh, okay, let me ask whether there are any questions, comments, quibbles, corrections for the March 21st uh, meeting. Um, Borelli is still wrong on item 4A. That's not a good thing Two to bars. do. Two bars. Two bars. I know. Thank you. That's good. That's a method to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, do I have a uh, motion or to accept? Uh, motion to accept the minutes of Monday, March 21st, 2022, with the correction second. Okay. Excellent. And who will uh, that. thank you, Jeff? All right. And now, uh, uh, vote Dylan first this time. I do. You Aye. Uh, thank you, <laughs> sir. Okay, and uh, Laura. Aye. Okay, and Don. Aye. And Jeff. Aye. And Gloria. Aye. And also aye. Okay, so unanimously approved with the correction. <laughs> Misspelling that's <laughs> name. Not a good thing to do. Okay. Um, the uh, next one is the uh, April 7th. Are there co corrections there? Who want to make? And would someone move and then second to accept the minutes if you don't have any corrections? I move to accept the uh, events of Monday, April 7th, Thank 2022. You. Okay, and a second. second. Thank you, Laura. All right, uh, those in favor? Laura? Aye. Okay, Don? Aye. All right, uh, Jeff? Aye. Uh, and Gloria? Aye. And Dylan? Aye. Did I ask you already? No. No, uh, Dylan? Yes. Okay, thank you. And also, so unanimous for that. And then April 28th, and then these can all be put to bed. Are there any comments at all? I abstain. Okay. 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 Ah. Did it say I have? Yes, it does say that you work and you work here. You were snorkeling and doing I that. was doing snuba. <laughs> we'll ask later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Google is very cool. 
That's lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's lovely. Anyhow, any comments? <laughs> oh, actually, I do. I do have that you were uh, absent. It's just it's yeah. on the same line. Yeah. Okay. Um, any uh, comments? If not, but I have a motion to accept. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Okay. Thank you. And now. Uh, Gloria? Aye. Okay, Don? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Okay, uh, Dylan? Aye. Okay, and Laura? Okay. Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Do we have enough for a vote? Yes, we do because we count me. So five, five, and one extension. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we are now going to talk a little bit about some updates on houses uh, on the inventory. Uh, the first is the Coleman Gay. <laughs> I'll let you talk about that. It's been purchased. It's going to be renovated. The, uh, the basic scheme is to, we spoke to the builder mm -hmm. that was hired by the owner. Um, the basic scheme is that the front part of the house, the old part of the house, will be retained and restored, mm -hmm. and that the L's to the back, most of which, most of which date to the 30s, 30s, 60s, and 70s, will probably be removed and rebuilt. In fact, it's going to be, yes. what do you say, 5,000 square feet? It's going to be huge, huge, it's huge, huge, huge. But it's a huge lot. Um, it's going to extend way into the lot, but... Um, I think, you know, from our point of view, the old part of the house is going to be preserved and improved. The streetscape is going to be preserved. Um, and that seems to be pretty much uh, a good win. Yeah. yeah. So they, they will be before us with a, a demo from you. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And they may be here in June. They may be here in June, hoping to circumvent that by presenting a plan that we can. If it's, if it's renovation and not demolition, is that? Change anything? They're going to dem demolish the whole to back two thirds of the house. But I'm just wondering. Let's say they weren't going to demolish any part of the home. They were just going to do this major re renovation. That wouldn't even come to us, right? It would just go as a yeah. building permit request. Well, no, I thought because because mm -hmm. the part of the, the word that we we have faced with people coming in and and replacing windows or things and doing and and, or, and interior walls, but because the word demo. And the red folder, uh, Dave has sent us. Dave has sent them to us, but we don't actually have any jurisdiction. Yeah, but, like that. but if they're tomorrow, give, you know. We can give advice. It's like the people of the house on Warren Street. We can give advice, um, but we can't. Well, I think that we, demands. we should. I, I look at it as it's a demolition. You know, we just vote that we, um, we don't believe that part of that because it's being, you know, the historic part of the house. Well, this, this will come to us because it will be that. Right. Yeah. But if they, no, if they were just doing it, they're just I, doing I believe this, it's not, a, it's not, prefer, you know, it's not preferably um, preferred because, uh, because they're maintaining the historic context of the house, even though they're demolishing half or three quarters of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, it that will come up. Yeah. That will come up to us when you were, if you know when they do file their and the uh, demolition request. The other thing they might do, and we have done this in the past, is if they have a plan that we think is suitable. For example, if they say, "Okay, here's our plan, dated whatever," you know, that, and we're going to preserve this, we're going to do that. In the past, we have sent a note to Dave to say, if they adhere to this plan, we do not have to have a hearing. If they do not, they gain. Well, alterations that we do, but we vote. But, so we on the on the. But it's not before us. Yet, on the so. central lab on the central lab house, um, by Newman, mm -hmm. we voted to find that um, historically you know, significant. Mm -hmm. But we did. We we also voted at and the we same time. And, and we were wrong. And we were wrong. We found out <laughs> by talking with town council that, that we should we shouldn't do have done again. it that way. And we never will do it yes. that way. He basically said, he basically said, no harm, no foul, don't do it. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, so we will. We be, voted the same. We voted at the same meeting 
to not have, we, we voted to find it historically significant, right? But we, but we also voted that we didn't not need that. We didn't, we yeah, not, not to preserve, to preserve it. it. So therefore we didn't need to have that meeting in 45 days. Yes, and yes. we were told not to do that again. It circumvents the public's ability to comment about our neighbors. It takes away their ability to have a comment on what's happening around them. And it is in contradiction to the bylaw. So this will not. Could we and, combine, you know, the bylaws only say we must do it within 45 days, right? But it says we must, we must notify the letters and post the paper for two weeks prior to the meeting. Right. Could we, but couldn't we put on the agenda that we plan on doing both at the same meeting and we give the and we give the community opportunity to to give their input on 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 both things? Um, I could see a scenario in which knowing it was coming soon enough, we could consolidate the process. Get the abutters notices out and the public posting out prior to the first meeting. But I don't, as a practical matter, we never right. had that kind of movie time. And our but next we have, meeting we have, is on the this 16th. One, if, if on this one, if we now you have some, we, we have some. No, nothing's time. been filed. Huh? Nothing's been filed. We don't have no. anything to know. But you say it may come before us in June. Well, we, 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 talked, plan and we talked with the contractor um, who is. Has has plans, um, well, so he'll be going. Yeah. How, how, I'm, I would be all. I would be all <laughs> for trying to the, the, the streamline the process and stay within the confines he's of what we have be, to do. He's to, not going to be that far along. Yeah, yeah. He's he's scrapping because he wants to get some advice and 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 shorten up the process as much as possible. He's going to scrap to get stuff before us. He's not going to be. Is this a new, mm -hmm. uh, purchase a new person for Nuna Needham? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and do you want to talk about the Lucas Mill? Uh, well, to the extent that we know anything yet, the house is on the market. Which this I find is at the corner of Parish Road. 1830, it was actually the first, well, Lucas Mill was the first postmaster, so it sort of ran which post out of his house. It's that little one with the little, with the little dew pond. It's on the corner of oh, Jarvis. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the corner of uh, oh, parish? parish, parish, and central. Mm -hmm. um, it oh, was, it's about a story and a half tall. It's a challenging house, story and a half tall. It has two stanchions. It had the barn. We, we, they came up to us yeah, with the last barn. year about the barn. Yeah, yeah. 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 but the barn is now on a separate piece of course. property. Ah, yes, so. and somewhat sad because Mrs. Well, Deluca, Mrs. Thorpe Deluca, uh, her the Thorpe family has owned that house for seven or eight generations. So it's um, a wonderful lot too. Yeah, it might not be. It, it might not I'm be sure it's really wet. Though. Wet though, yeah. It's very, it's very wet. It has that pond in it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I did talk to a builder who was. She hasn't. I don't believe she has yet sold the house, but she's looking to sell the house. I looked talked to a builder who was asking about it. So, I think come the fall, this one is going to be on our radar screen as well. Okay. They're probably going to look to put two houses there. Probably, probably a big enough lot to do that. Without the barn or with the corner frontage? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, without the barn or the corner frontage. But, but what, well, whether or not they can get it to the, um, you know, the clear wetland. wetland, right? I mean, we're, we're a pool. Well, they, mm -hmm. they, you know, I mean, it's below grade, right? Below there, right? And now the regulations will don't allow, allow them just to ignore the grade and fill it in, you know, like that, right? They now have to take current. That's great. Right. That's a problem for the building department. Yeah. So that's so we'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see how that comes. We'll, we'll, but but that is that is on our horizon. We don't know yet which point that's going to take. It hasn't been sold yet, so um, there's no there's no firm plan. But the, the fact that she has it on the market um, that's being sold out of the family and that builders are looking at it. The builders do their homework. They're probably not going to buy it if someone gets excited with its square footage and mm -hmm. comes in there and then finds out who. Mm -hmm. There's yep, nothing, nothing we can control. No, <laughs> that's that's absolutely beyond us. But what we really do need to talk about is um, well, the contractor for the Tolman game might be with us in June. We know that Jen Doherty from Mass Historical is going to be with us in June. So the question then becomes uh, what we should be asking her. And one of the things that uh, we have wonderful material that uh, 
Laura put together meeting all of the um, regulations about how to uh, develop a, a local historic district. We have uh, the flow chart, we know that. And then we have um, a request from Kate Fitzpatrick that we suggest goals to her. And do you have an extra copy of that? Are we, uh, well, we're are we jumping to agenda I, items? Actually, yes. I was kind of squishing. You, you gave me the idea. You just squished <laughs> things together. May I make um, a request? Yes. If you are, I would hope that you are jumping the agenda item because that's the one I'm here to do. Okay. Uh, the next agenda item is preparation for the meeting with Jen Dorothy. But one of the things that helps us to get ready for that is not just understanding the flow sheet and all of the steps that we have to go through. It's also involved with this, yes, yes, uh, with putting together a goal for the uh, select board that fits with um, uh, the material that you have already sent, uh, Mo. And what we have is a, um, you have another copy? Okay. I think we ought to show this to Mo because you know what things for the select board should look like. Can I, and, can I, so can I talk about the preparation for, for Jen? Yes, absolutely. Please this, do. Um, some of the, you know, I, I think some of the questions, I, I think the research and the presentation has been done, more than done is, is, is excellent, right? So, um, I, I, and the graphics are all there. Um, it, it, um, so, you know, we don't need her to give us the basics. I think, you know, um, she'll, I think she'll give us some, you know, that background and, and, and then, you know, we come up with some questions, you know, certainly the questions that I think are off the top of my head are, you know, from her experience, what are some of the things to prepare for in the public process to get this uh, the, um, to pass? So from her experience, what can we, pitfalls can we anticipate and how do we address those? And also, um, just to take my moment, I might think that do, is the, do we want to open this up to beyond our, our committee, you know, as well, and then maybe to invite the, uh, a representative from the select board um, or even town leadership, you know, to because they'll be intimately involved, you know, in in this process with uh, bylaw changes and town meeting. So mm -hmm. it, it, you, they don't, and they don't have a longstanding um, uh, background of this process that we do. Um, and it might be helpful for them to get uh, that information directly from her and not secondhand from us. Exactly. And uh, as a matter of fact, Matt Barilli with two R's uh, said that he was going to make sure it's going to be the one to kind of see this through and make sure that it gets done. We should invite Matt because inviting Marianne at this point or Marcus, they've got enough to do. Uh, but inviting Matt. Well, I think you, they, we should make that that we should let them make that decision. That we should okay. that we should invite the the whole board or their representative, mm -hmm. and, and they can make those decisions if that chooses okay. to be. Sure. the representative uh, of the select board right I, I would like it to have that meet of not just someone volunteering as you know but it is a representative mm -hmm. uh, officially in that way and right. so um yeah because it does become a handoff rather than our full participation because the study committee has to be appointed there are requirements for people to be on that study and if we want to get this done fast we want them to get those questions ask and answer quickly rather than mm -hmm. six months. Okay. Well, go ahead. I, I I don't know if my experience is current, but I do have some experience with select board goal setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They yes. look at many goals. So I think that typically the town manager 
queries the board about its interest in previous goals and any new goals. I made a formal request to the select board that they um, make something like this a goal. I don't know how much attention between now and I don't know when they're meeting on their goals. They're going to be able to devote as a board to screening this particular goal. I think if you prepare them with material, I think this is very thorough. It gives them a very good idea about what the steps are. Um, and then they, they're not going to move from a request to bringing it to town meeting in months. I think that they would, if they decided to make that a goal, they would approach you and say, what do we need to do? And then assign some resource on the part of the town administration to help carry out that goal. Would it help if there were examples of um, this a local historic district having been created in similar towns? Yes. So one of the things they do is what is the, I think they legitimately worry about what the administrative burden on the town administration is going to be for any particular goal and how that gets allocated among all the goals. So if there is information about what other towns have done and with whom Kate or whoever she assigns to this, if they adopt this as a goal, to flesh out what the burden has been. For example, I'm sure there's an administrative burden when somebody applies. Um, so that would be good information. Plus, we don't want to we don't want to appear that we're working in some sort of vacuum that we're not aware of what's going on in right. other places. Exactly. exactly. We want to do a little research. On no it. surprises is the best approach. Yes. And again, I am speaking to myself. I'm willing to be a pilot. I think if you keep it to one property, then you're not boring anybody else's okay. ox. It makes it simpler. Okay. And then we know how it works. Yeah. And we, uh, what Don did when he wrote this draft, 1.1 mentions your property. Right. Uh, and the select board, of course, has to appoint the study commission. Right. But what we need to do is come up with some people who could serve on right. the study commission. Right. Uh, because the last thing in this world people need to do is sit and try to come up with names. Right. right. So, you know, my my first impression is as uh, the, the, this test case for um, <clears throat> the first local historic district was not to, to not use your house as uh, the first one, but I thought that 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 might complicate things at town meeting, and there might be some inherent distrust of town meeting members. Now, I was swayed by I think your uh, by this committee uh, leaning that direction also, but I we we know that the that the select board have this as has a goal. They gave us like. Ideas that they wanted to have this discussion before we started talking about their annual goal setting process. Right. So we know, you know, that abstractly that they had this as going forward with local historic districts that that, that, that was a goal that they wanted and, and, and that were and they were uh, sensitive to yours as maybe being a, um, a good one to go to. I was, well, you want a willing participant. Well, we have what well, we have. I think we have. The two other, uh, the, there's a Warren Street um, group. That, that involves more than one property. Right. Yes. Yes. The reason I'm suggesting this. Well, oh, so I told you, I, I was, that was my first impression. I, I was yeah. swayed, okay? Uh, so I, 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 I was swayed and I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna vote that way okay. as well. So that, but, but just know my, my concerns No, no, are, that's a legitimate concern and I, it certainly crossed my mind. Um, on the other hand, I don't see any economic benefit or and sales advantage I, to my, me or my heirs. I agree. I, I mean, so, I agree. And I think, I think when we sell, when, when we sell it, if, if we sell it point. to the select board and we, you know, and we, we 
tease out all those things, I think we can then sell it to town meeting right. and, 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 and get rid of those inherent distrust aspects, but we have to be cautious. Of course. I think we also need to, just out of respect, make sure that the, the working housing group committee that just got started that's well, I don't for all think that kinds. affects them at all. It, it may not, but they're looking at all kinds of housing, and I don't, I... I think they're looking at equity and gentrification and uh, transit-oriented development. Mm -hmm. This is a simple preserving an historic asset. I Even agree. if it's not used for housing or if it's used for multifamily housing, it preserves the envelope of the house. It does not affect the interior. I, that has, I think there's that, some extremes. Uh, there, there are, I there respectfully are disagree with that. I mean, they're supposed to be looking at all types of housing. Uh, and I, I agree with you. I think that they should be. That just should be notified. They should just know. I of think that's, they the, know. that's the select boards. That's the select boards consideration, right? If they choose not to include them, you know, in the yeah. process or something. That's, that, that's their choice. We're, I don't think that's within ours. I'm I mean, not against them being in, included in the information or even being asked to weigh in. I'm just saying subjectively, I don't even think that's on their radar. It might not be. But, but they could okay. be, I, there's some extreme views on that in, in that board that we're, they're the ones that I would be concerned about who we get up there on town meeting floor with that level of distrust. And is there some exclusive kind of favoritism kind of thing? And, oh, you know, right? and, oh, and, and okay. we need to have an answer for that, for those extreme views, because there's some people who want to you know, do away with zoning in general. To me, it comes for, down to you know, how town meeting works. And in order to get something through town meeting, you have to make a very good case. So I believe that a good case can be made for establishing the ability of the town to create an historic district. And if there is a willing citizen who wants to enter into that process. And as long as it's a help, it's a, the, the study, the study com committee that is, that is um, developed by the select board, if they do a good job of vetting this publicly and hold public hearings. So if you, when, when people go up there and say, you know. Okay, I, I do have a question for Jen. And that is uh, one of the things that she has talked about in her public statements is that you need to create a groundswell of opinion that this is really a good thing to do for NIDA. Right. Okay. Well, you know, how do we do that? How do we get to all of those stakeholders? And maybe one of the stakeholders is someone, a group that doesn't have immediate interests in exactly what we're doing, but we need to get out to a lot of people. Uh, Public all, and we need to talk about it all the time. And we need to be saying more or less the, the same thing with, you know, and um, right. this is better than the um, um, elevator speech. It that just needs to be a, working it, it needs to be a, a, a well public uh, publicized you know discussion yep. where um, uh, where it's visible recorded you know and 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 that's where you get your groundswell uh, uh, because yep. you, you know you, you'll people who are interested will be there people who who aren't don't, are are not knowledgeable who might be uh, who, who might be oh uh, this is something maybe I should attend. That's mm -hmm. where you get your ground slow. And I, I think also that we have uh, now built up, except I have got to get Brian LeMay's friend's address, but I will get it from Brian. I'm we are. Hmm? I'm you could have seen now. Bless you. Okay, that's who was it? I didn't get it. But he, he signed it. Gary Goodwin. Yes. Gary Goodwin. Goodwin. Yes, Goodwin. Um, but we are building with the people who have come to our public meetings about different uh, houses. We are starting to build a core of people and if they tell their friends and, you know. Um, and again, Laura, Laura has a point though that even though the, the housing committee is not looking at historic preservation, we dovetail 
over the issue of how easy it is to tear down the house. Right, and it yeah. would yes. do no and, harm to, to bring Yeah, that and issue. that, you know, they're, they're more looking at, I hope, you know, some of the, you know, keeping some of the more manageable, more, more affordable properties, you know, in the market rather than it's tear down, but we're, some of those properties are historic. Yeah, it was like yeah. the, the argument that we gave with the John Mills house, that that would be a great starter home for yeah. someone rather than tear it down and build something up at a higher price point. Yes, this yeah. will this okay. will cap the price, that's for sure. I think that property is worth a lot more as a tear down than it would be as a preserved. Well, in, in so far as any property right now is worth more as a tear down because, <laughs> because a builder will circumvent competition by just offering over the, over the, uh, the assessment. Right. Um, yep. You know, but there's been, and that this, this needs some updating as you get questions from Jen, uh, a fair amount of research about whether demolition delays have affected house prices. And to some extent, it appears that they don't, but they do affect the time on market. Yes. yes. Time on market is now an almost completely irrelevant, <laughs> um, you know, category um, because the inventory is so so scarce. Well, and what else but, is happening is because there's such demand now. Yeah, some of these deals are just done. They don't. They never hit MLS. Right. Yeah. People right. don't even know. They're just happening right. like boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. Right. Right. So some of the appraisals are not coming in at some of these values because. The appraisers don't have access to that information. So it's really kind of an interesting situation. Yeah. Like, a private party cannot compete with a developer. Yeah. But, uh, it, uh, I'm not talking private party. Party. I'm talking developers. It's all, all realtors and developers are already negotiating oh, that, things. Mean, they never even hit. You know, they're, 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 been they're done like that the, for years. Yeah, the the deals are, but right years. now, it's rampant. I could it, turn around in a heartbeat. I, I wish it would. Well, no, no, it's a function of the economy. Higher interest rates, right? Yeah. Supply well, and Needham, Needham, because of the because of the demand, Needham now has a lot of inventory, mm -hmm. uh, and with the with the higher interest rates, you know, things could slow down. Uh, There's definitely going to be a change soon. It, it has to. Oh, okay, now I have a question for former select board member, and that is, how does uh, a we decide we need to get something to Cape by the end of June. June 29th is the drop dead date. Um, how do we present this? I mean, can we present it with the in this kind of format? Um, I think this is informative, and you may have some background materials or a reference yes. of people who are interested in following up. Yep. Okay. But um, okay, we can do that and. Uh, the flow sheet, our uh, flow chart, and the material that you've already put together, which talks about everything that has to be done. I think what's missing is we need to, and I'm happy to do this alone or with someone, decide what towns are sort of like towns. Rick used to give us towns like that and yeah. reach out and kind of say, like, what was this like when you implemented this? Can you get that, those names yes. from I'm blocking her name, the person who's coming? I, I did. I uh, was Jen Doherty. What's involved in it? A call to her. Yes. And uh, the library uses a list of uh, matchment towns that they always check with. But we'll call Jen and ask her what she sees as our. Yeah, it's very helpful to know the experience of other towns. Typically, yes. when we and do something, we she may even them. know the people that we can right. yeah, exactly talk to. And yeah. You want to know the pitfalls too. There may be pitfalls that we're not anticipating. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's an undue burden on the building department, or maybe there's an undue burden on you folks. Ah, um, uh, okay. You see, squishing out these three things together really did work. How many interviews have we done now in the last six months? It'll slow down. Yeah. If you have everybody in an historic preservation situation, then maybe you would have less data. Good bird would fall. You know, it will get us out of our jobs. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we have we have some questions for. Jen, and if you think of any more, please. 
Is she going to be at the June 12th meeting? Yes. Okay, so that gives us time. That gives us some time. Okay. I'll, know, um, I'll note sort of the specific questions as a subcategory in minutes. Excellent. Um, that but then, but then you know, think about others and we can add them here. Yeah. That's very good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, do we have, okay, so we will be able to get our, our goal to Kate by the deadline. Right. Uh, we will be able to uh, have Jen come and we know all of the basics. So she doesn't have to start with, this is a local historic district. She can, and we, we've got some questions and we'll get even more. When is uh, she coming? Uh, June 13th. I know, I you're not talk. here. When's our next meeting? 13th. 13th. Okay. I may be able to come. We're leaving on the 14th for two weeks. Yes. I'll try to come on. Oh, that would be wonderful, Mo, because I think it would be great to have you here. With Bring her, her along. Well, she's going to be packed. <laughs> Bring her along for to a wait a minute. If he's taking anyone to Lawrence, he's taking me. <laughs> So it's here. here. Hmm? Do we know? Do we know the room? Yet? We probably don't know where. Yes, it's here. Oh, okay. Well, if the, depending on how many people decide to come, right? No, that's true. Was so not open it to the public either? Um, uh, let the well, it's in. always on, and we can invite. I would ask Brian Lemay to come back because he is obviously really interested. Um, and if there were other people that did you talk to Jerry Goodwin? Did I what? Yeah, did you talk to Jerry Goodwin? I, I said hello to him. And I was wondering why he was interested in catching up with him. Um, I, just because I think that every time it's like marketing, every time you do a touch, that's a reason for going out and doing another touch. Okay. It's, it's marketing. It's just plain marketing. And, and we're marketing the idea of having a local historic district is in Needham's best interest. Mm -hmm. Well, and having the ability for the town to do it in the future because this establishes the a precedent. precedent. Yes. Yeah. Well, it also the helps us save some right. houses that we really have no. <laughs> Well, we, we, even we if you have know what it does, the key months, is a voluntary participation of the town owner. I think yes. Once you get into involuntary, we ran into this a few years ago when the commission wanted to extend the length of demolition delay. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And then we got into a thing about uh, there were several houses that became part of the inventory, but not voluntarily, who would be affected. So the key to this, I think, is to make sure that people who find themselves in this situation have volunteered to be in the situation. And in fact, it says in the first line, create a voluntary right. local historic district, which is really important. Maybe right. another question. Um, we talk about single residents, you know, single district, single residence districts. Can you? You essentially have missing teeth. Yes, in the district, you can have missing teeth, according to what Jen said at one of her presentations. You just don't want to have a thing that looks like Swiss cheese that's been nibbled by the nibbled by the local mice. Yeah, and I'll, I, it should make some sense, but of course you can have you can have missing teeth. Yeah. She um, also said that you don't really need the homeowner's approvals now. We. Don't want to go that route. No, we don't. I think you no. will never get it through time. You don't. Yeah, no, yeah. Unlike, oddly enough, a national register district requires homeowner approval, but means absolutely nothing. So it's easy to get. This, which is a lot more powerful, does not require homeowner approval, but you would never get it through town meeting. Right. Since each district has to be approved by town meeting, you could never get a true town meeting if the owner stood up and said, we don't want this. Right, and you right. have to decide also if you want a separate commission for each district, or if this body would become the district commission. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that that's another not. question for Jen, because she said right. once the local historic 
commission should not be uh, the study committee. And I think she also said that it should not be the, uh, the um, commission, the, the district commission. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a for Jen. And I do yes. know, by the way, that Newton Upper Falls has mm -hmm. an historic district. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we it's probably not an example you want to bring up. I've been to one of them. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You sent me one of those meetings. Oh, man. Yeah. About the bridge? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, yes. Was, yes. Uh, yeah, the Echo Bridge. Yeah. Should yeah. we be thinking about there are certain types of people that need to be on the study group? Yes. That might. Yes. That we might want to suggest that could attend this meeting as well. Yes. Architects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously, we know Mark, uh, but there are other architects in um, town. But would this, is this something we can appoint? Or is this no, no, they would just be invited to this meeting. So with, yeah. Yeah. And, and see whether or not they're interested in uh, this. There was the guy that we that represented, was it the Warren Street owner? Or another another prop, property that did a lot of historic preservation, um, and he also lives in Newton. Who did the McCrackens uh, use? Not the McCrackens. Uh, the people who bought the McCracken place. Jesus, were the Jones? Barbara Jones. I think she probably. Uh, I don't. She does some of that herself. I don't know if she does. Um, what about the McKay? I hear people talk about McKay as a big Mike. Mike, Mike McKay. Okay. Um, but I have to look up his name. But the guy, he, he was here talking to us for one of the projects. And, and, um, oh, okay. The, the wonderful house. Um, I can't remember if it was the red one on Warren with the row of windows and the new barn, which was a different project at this point. But um, I've got his name. Okay, we've had subsequent discussions. Um, he does live and work in Newham. So, there is okay. an architect married to Blue Star Media, Rob. Yeah, B House. She did 99 Warren Street or 100 Warren, you know, the Kirk's work. Okay. She was the architect on that. It was okay. a renovation, but I, but she, she knows the old structure. That B House, B, B E. Each of them, yes. Oh, okay. So what, okay. Are they, what was the architects who did the um, Maple Street? Yes. Um, yes. Who uh, that the, the builder was? The um, builder was Sullivan. Was Sullivan. Been Sullivan but, yeah, but uh, I don't remember the architects. I, mean, who's I can find out because I, mean, I know the house. I mean, that was a good house. That would be good because that was a nice job. Yeah. And again, you know. More people who come that respectful of the of the historic structure. Yes, uh, and we yes. also need someone from real estate. That's going to be controversial. Is there a realtor who actually respects historic preservation? Yeah. Um, I think Allison uh, Burley is recorded. respectful of historic structure. I think Ned, that's Ned a little Mahoney, too. Mahoney, someone, a little realtor, too I trust. Close. I do. Do Don't you think? You, I mean, with was on the select board. Yeah, I don't think that's yes. right. Um, uh, Ned Mahoney grew up in a historic house in Newton. Louise Condon could not, never be controversial. Right. Right. Uh, right? Louise or, or yes, no, she's she, out there. She, yeah. But uh, but Ned Mahoney is a real that's a possibility for a real estate person who knows Needham very well and is a good person. Okay. I just spoke to him this morning. But ultimately, the select board will be the appointment. Yes, yeah. but what if they have asked us to do is give them some names. Oh, now they they really want names. We're only us. talking about inviting people to Jen's presentation yeah. to, right. to get them informed. Right, right. You know, and that's the groundswell. Even with, you know, it might not have the people who who are not on the that that, that study committee to, right. be, to be informed. That makes complete really sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Um, then we have to have someone from the local historical society. <laughs> <laughs> you may, may not say no. Another committee to be on. Yes, <laughs> so you do. Yes. Um, 
Is and there, we'll also is there another that, category? I'm sorry? Is there an attorney? Is, is that one of the? No, no it's no. Uh, the American Institute of Architects, Historical Society, and Board of uh, Board Directors. Directors. Yeah. Right. And if uh, the town doesn't have someone, the uh, Mass Historical will go and get people in, and select two people, and you have to choose one. So Terrific. we don't want that. Terrific. Um, Jim Siegel's a possibility. Who's Jim Siegel? Jim's, Jim's an attorney, right? Jim is an attorney. But he's he's a trustee of the um, uh, master. Oh, is he? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Can he do this without being in yeah. conflict? Oh, yeah. Right. Because yeah. mass historical has just no, a, no, no jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. has no jurisdiction. Yeah. I know we're throwing out names, but we should probably give some consideration to diversity. Yes. In addition to what we found. Can, is it possible for us to kind of think about this and not yeah. do this now? Because we could yeah. sit here all night trying to. But the I, diversity is a very, very good point. Yeah, I agree. It's, with you. it's absolutely essential. And how often have we come up with a group and then got, oh my goodness, they're all white males. Right. Hmm. Maybe we should. Um, this is here us uh, following our new RE goals that we. Uh, yes, we, that we. Maybe we, we should them. all try to come up with a few, few ideas for each category and then mm -hmm. see if there's any consensus and then. Kind right. Of... Now, is it okay to invite the people that have been mentioned to our next meeting? Or should we wait until we see whether or not uh, Tolman Gay is coming along? I. Hmm. What's it called? Think, the, what's the name? I think we invite. We invite them. The, uh, we invite them because we've got Jen, uh, who does do a nice job. So person. I think she will. Give her maybe seven, give her seven to eight, and, and, and give her, as we have something else on the agenda about this house, you may get at eight o'clock, right. so we can right. get rid of those people before yeah, they. Do we have usually do a time to do it? I think this is, is a very good time to do it. Speaking of timed agendas, maybe we should all go home and have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I think that's a wonderful so idea. Before you do, can I make a suggestion? Yes, so absolutely. That it's on the record? Yes. You might want to, when you invite these folks, indicate that you're proposing a goal. Yes. To the select, select board, board. And, oh, yes. and the person speaking will help illustrate what you're talking about, and it may affect their disciplines. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, no, I hope you can come. Oh, I can come. The question is <laughs> <laughs> happy um, wife, happy life. Right? I'm joking. We'll have you okay. home. Do you think? Yes. Um, this, this, this is off the record. Are we adjourned? No. Uh, I, I will not take yet. no, not yet, because I haven't taken a vote. Uh, all those in favor? Hey, Don. Aye. Laura? Aye. Gloria? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are Dylan? adjourned.